Welcome to Taurus TV. I'm Melissa Hoyer and thanks for joining me. The word transformation has become a real buzzword. We hear about transformation in politics, in industry and of course in business, but we are all having to deal with transformation in of course our personal lives as well and it can be quite daunting. Everyone wants to see change, but very few of us really want to be the ones that have to change. In a business sense, transformation is the ability to deliver materials and information into products and services. For a business to be successful, it needs to firstly understand itself. This is foundational. And then of course, transformational processes can be implemented to reach new markets and of course, new opportunities. My guest today is a senior executive with global experience and a very, very large proven track record in delivering performance transformation. As a director of Ingenico, he's positioned himself as a go-to market transformation specialist. I need Barry now. Welcome, Barry Porter. Hi, Melissa, how are you? Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I mean, those words, I guess, transformation and change, I think we sometimes assume they're one of the same, but what is transformation? Well, they are used interchangeably for what it's worth. My take is change is doing things differently, but transformation is doing different things. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, for me, at the heart of it, which is you, change is about tweaking. Transformation is really about fundamentally altering the way you do things. And, and what is it though that, that makes it difficult for, for people, people sort of are quite fearful sometimes of change, aren't they? You know, mm. if suddenly they've gone from a, uh, using a particular type of computer and having to digitize in another way, that, you know, change can be so daunting. How do you go about sort of changing the way people perceive change? <laughs> Great question. So listen, if you go back to the 1500s, Oh, <laughs> Machiavelli. Yep. Uh, one of my favourite people, great, strangely. Great restaurant too. <laughs> um, he wrote that there is nothing more dangerous to underta undertake and more uncertain in its uh, outcome than to lead a change in the order of things. Mm -hmm. Because fundamentally, change is hard. Yeah. Change is uncomfortable. And when you think about it, um, People like to do things the way that they're comfortable doing them. And that typically means what they've always done, right? And for organizations, especially those with a heritage of success over many years, then their temptation, almost irresistible temptation, is to look backwards and not forwards. Mm. But that runs into this problem around with a kind of digitized world that you were just referring to, then... Um, customer expectations yep. go up all the time, new competitors arise all the time. And so we, we those two things kind of hit each other. Mm -hmm. And so you've got organizations and the people wanting to kind of look backwards and do mm. what's comfortable mm. and the outside environment demanding that they do things differently. Yes. And that gets overwhelming. But, but to what extent though do, I mean, current CEOs of, of big corporations, know that, that in order to continue to be successful, they need to change, they need to transform. You know, do you find some leaders who are sort of resisting change because they are in a, in a comfortable zone? Mm. Look, I, th I, think, I think there's a difference between intellectually knowing things need to change and almost at a gut level, emotionally committing to doing what's required. Mm -hmm. Because as, we, you know, as we've just said, whether it's you know changing your diet, whether it's um, you know moving from one kind of computer system to another, or whether it's embracing a new imperative demanded by your customers, um, you, you you have to go from "I'll oh, sure be right" yep. to "this really isn't working," and that that gulf is what really demands leadership more than anything else to truly take on that challenge. And so, so what should be, I mean, when you, we are talking about leaders and CEOs, what could or should be the first thing they start to do to, in order to implement change 
within the business? Mm. Um, I think there's three things, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first, kind of just as we've been talking about, is to actually recognise and own the need to change. Uh, that's the kind of easy bit. The, the next two bits get increasingly difficult. The, the, so the next one is, uh, I call it, you have to create a burning platform. Um, that so sounds interesting. <laughs> What's a burning platform? <laughs> well, so basically it means, first of all, um, recognising that we can't carry on the way we are, mm -hmm. but then actually communicating to the team, the organisation, that there's this big imperative that we need to change. Um, and that uh, it's going to be difficult and it's going to require us to do different things. Mm. Um, but so that's the second step is to create that burning platform. The third step um, is probably the most important, and that's to create a safe harbor. Because if you think about it, if, you, if you're really good at creating a burning platform, then you get people running in all directions. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that means out of the business. So what you need to do is having created the platform, is to then create somewhere for people to run to. Yes. And that but that requires you to really articulate what it looks like, that it's possible to get there, but also that everyone understands that they have a role mm -hmm. in helping the company get there. Because the thing is, oftentimes people think, oh, this is all changing, and I don't see my, I don't see me in this new entity. And so you need to create that safe harbour that everyone feels a part of. So when, I mean, Sharon, I know Barry has been working on your team over, over the years. Was that safe harbour or that burning platform, were all of those elements sort of in place when, uh, when, when you two were working together? I think Barry and I have always had a mutual chemistry and core values, so we were prepared to take a risk. And our burning platform, we were, we might have been burning, but we, uh, we were not gonna run away, were we? <laughs> So, so when you worked together, Sharon, what, what were the strengths that you saw in Barry that you really, I guess, implemented within Taurus? Yes, great question. Um, Barry and I had been working together in various forms and I'd seen how he led his companies. He's a consummate sales professional as well as a leadership professional. So what I got from Barry was leadership um, learnings mm -hmm. and also sales learnings. So go to market strategies. And so when we worked together, Barry lifted the game of, of my business and of our clients' businesses by bringing those things into the fold. And there was a particular, um, well, what was Barry's <laughs> first encounter with you oh, from a business point of view? Yeah, it was probably about the third. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Barry turned up at a grey water recycling company. Mm -hmm. Which would Thanks, be Barry. <laughs> which, let's Thanks face for that it, one. isn't probably an easy sell. Grey water recycling industrial units. Yeah. Thanks, very Barry. important, though, very important. So, so and we, we do, that's what we do. We do complex, you know, uh, uh, business to business on, on the whole. Um, so we looked at it, we did a strategy, we got everyone on, on side. We created a burning platform, and then we rolled the grey water recycling marketing strategy out. And we created Barry Porter Speaks Water. <laughs> and which, which, of course, Barry, I think you need to say that because you have the perfect accent. Can you, please, we need it. Barry Water. <laughs> Barry Water. Barry Porter Talks Water. <laughs> And I mean gold, and pure we, marketing we, gold. <laughs> we created National Water Day. In, and I remember walking into Koshi on sunrise and him saying to me, Sharon, is there a National Water Day? And I said, there is now. <laughs> Especially when Barry Port was involved. <laughs> Barry Porter is about to speak and talk water. And I would imagine and Barry would have made it very, I mean, grey water, very interesting. You know, some people yeah. would be very bland about talking grey water, but I think, Barry, just observing your personality, you would have made it sing. <laughs> but can I just add that we hooked up, because, you know, we're looking at global strategy, with everything we do, we ho hooked up with Matt Damon when he was peeing in the garden to Correct. save flushing the loo. So we actually got this grey water recycling unit tweeted and recognised by Matt Damon in America. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we literally got into this. I can't even remember the name of his campaign, but we ta tagged onto that. Yeah. So, so you got into this and the global this zone. commercial yeah. distribution production manufacturing company onto this global celebrity stage. Mm. But that is what good communications and marketing is. <laughs> so, a lot, yeah. some, so sometimes it's luck. I mean, that was fortunate that Matt happened to be peeing wherever yeah. he was peeing. Well, we're, we're very clever. <laughs> we're very clever. And we've always had a laugh, haven't we? Absolutely. We've right. always and had a laugh. that's important. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I've got a couple of uh, three quick questions for you, yep. Barry. So I'd sort of pretend you're on a, you know, a game show here. Is transformation more about sales than other aspects of business? No, absolutely not. I'm very passionate about this. Transformation has to in involve everyone in the business. If you think about it, um, whether you're in manufacturing and you, you put together the out-of-the-box experience yep. for a new user, whether you're in customer service and you're talking to someone, typically someone phones customer service and they've got a problem, or whether you're in finance and you're changing the readability of an invoice. Mm -hmm. All of, if you think about it, on a customer journey, and typically I help companies evolve their customer journey, along any journey, there's touch points. And each one of those touch points, you can, Im you can improve the experience of the customer at that touch point. And that's why everyone has to come together to work out their contribution to changing those touch points. The second one, how important is motivation? Oh my God, motivation is absolutely critical. Mm. Um, so we talked about change is difficult, right? We talked about we want to do what we continue mm. to do. So if you're going to get people to do stuff differently, they need to be excited about it. They need to feel um, that this is their role in it. Mm -hmm. This is the contribution they're making. And that if they don't turn up and make that contribution, it will fail. So uh, they really need to be engaged at that level. Exactly. I guess that, that really goes into my third, that, that how important it is to engage your workers in the process. Yeah, so, we, I mean, if, if people aren't engaged, the transformation will fail. Yes. I mean, if I, if I look at transformations that don't work, the most common reason is people aren't engaged mm. in the process. Mm. So you've got to... So what does that look like? That Because, listen, you're going you're gonna to run into problems. Yep. However well-designed something is, you're going to run into roadblocks, you're going to run into difficulties, you're going to run into things that don't work out, circumstances change. So unless people work together to kind of roll with those punches yep. and then move on and keep working towards the goal, then it's going to fail. Mm. And I guess uh, and to you, Sharon, I mean, within the 27 years of, of Taurus Marketing being around, you've worked with over a thousand brands and people to get them to a you know a, a level of engagement and and so and recognition um how difficult is that and what i guess are, are what are your three sort of top tips in order that, that, that you implement when you are working with a new brand or a particular person so um if we're transforming, then I get uh, then then clarity of outcome, clarity mm -hmm. of where we're going. So clarity of journey. We talk about the yellow brick road, and we're all knowing where we're going to and where we're getting, so that we're all on that journey and mm -hmm. that road. We all know where the bullseye is. Mm -hmm. um, then, um, oh, let's just start by saying we we identified what that is, so we're we're all clear. Then getting your army and your generals on on side to make sure they're all marching the same way. Um, and then communicating that journey really well in, internally and externally to bring more, more um, of those from the countryside onto that journey, joining you on, yes. on that ride. So clarity of where you're going, generals on side, messaging clear so that people have a choice to join you on that journey or not. Mm. And Barry, internationally, I mean, I know you have worked you know, certainly not just in the, the, the national Australian space, but internationally. How big a deal was that? And, 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 and really, I guess, does the, the thought of transformation, does it change from country to country? So, yeah, listen, I've, I've worked in North America, Latin America, Europe, wow. Asia Pac. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think whilst the... I mean, there's, there's language differences, mm. but... but Subtleties of culture or communication styles, but fundamentally, people want to succeed. People want to be part of a winning team, wherever you are, whether you're in Sydney or Sao Paulo, mm. people want to win. 
And so, so provided you can help them understand how they win, then I th and I think that's a, the, back to that's the leadership thing. That's not a country thing. Then I think that makes a difference. And in in terms of Australia, listen, I I love Australia, which is why I've made it my home. I love the the kind of honesty and the directness. <laughs> but you know, the other thing, and I, I love um, one of the reasons I've always loved Taurus's strapline of no bull yes. is I think not only does it apply to the Australian context, but certainly in my experience when I've been a client, it. it, it it absolutely applies to the way Taurus engages with its clients. And, and, and of the countries that you have worked sort of, you know, internationally, is there one or two in particular that are really happy to embrace sort of change and transformation? Or are there, or are there, are there some that are a little bit hesitant? Um, you, you know, <laughs> the old Mary Poppins song mm, um, about, you know, the... Spoonful of sugar. So I, I won't do this again. But if you kind of find the fun and snap, the job's a game. Yes. Yeah. So for me, that's the trick, right? You have to work out what it is it that people can be excited about, and then help them understand how they become a part of that. So for CEOs, I guess you know who are tuning in from from, from hopefully around the world, how can you help? them to achieve sort of success with their existing business and particularly if they are they are looking at going through a transformational period or needing to transform mm. what would you do I, I think any great relationship and and a, i get involved in relationships with people basically any great relationship starts with a conversation yeah and for me that conversation has to focus on what the the ceo um is trying to achieve, mm -hmm. what their challenges are, what they've tried in the past, what hasn't worked. And I think once you understand that, and once you're both talking about that, mm -hmm. then what you need to do actually evolves very naturally from that conversation. For Barry Porter, thank you. Sharon Williams, thank you. And thank you for joining in. I'm Melissa Hoyer.